Yes. And I really and truly don't wish to give you those names. I think if you want them, I will, I will get someone else to give them to you, but I'm not going to give them to you. You should go back and take another look. I am saying to you, you're not, you're not going to tell me that the taxpayers are not being compromised uh, in regard to public safety. I am sorry that I am really coming uh, very strong, uh, but I am telling you right now, Public safety is a priority, not only for me, but I hope it's for each and every one of these uh, legislators. And it's a priority for people who are sitting out there. And I want to say something else. There were people who wanted to come today and had expected to uh, have their voices heard. However, we have not had one evening budget hearing of the full legislature this session. And that is a, uh, is a crime, because there are others out there who will come here and tell you, Commissioner, that public safety is being compromised. And I'm going to say another thing to you. difference and due respect, where am I jeopardizing public safety? All right, let me ask you something. Do you have enough police cars in each of the districts uh, Nothing Precinct. has changed. It's, we have okay. minimum maintenance right, I'm going to ask you, right. the same. Okay, that's why we see, uh, I shouldn't say this publicly because I know I'm going to get into trouble for it. Uh, but that's okay, I'm always in trouble. Uh, we have second precinct covering third precinct cars in Southburg. And there would have been people here today to tell you that. And don't say uh, that, oh, not, uh, it's not the case, or that's very rare. It's wait, wait, becoming more but, prevalent. Throughout the history of this department, there's a huge storm or a lot of police activity. It is unusual to dispatch a car from an adjoining precinct to another during busy time. But I can tell you here that since we signed the minimum manning agreement many, many years ago, the staffing is precisely the same day to day as it's always been. We maintain that with overtime if necessary. Uh, as, you know, as you know, I have been hired. I have a class graduating in December. I have a class graduating in February. The cuts that we're making to the headcount are coming from back office jobs, not from the street. We'll continue to hire, and that is why we've been able to reduce overtime this year, and we're going to reduce it further next year. But you will not come to the 2750 with those classes next year. 2652. But that should, that as should I testified count. at the public safety hearing, I read off the number of police officers in uniform on patrol and sergeants that you see on patrol. Those numbers are actually going up slightly in next year's budget. The cuts are coming from Tom's office, from other offices, administrative offices, where we have police officers and supervisors. In this communications bureau, we're completely civilianizing with CSEA people that operation. We're doing it in areas that do not compromise our strength on the street. You will have more police officers in the third precinct next year's budget, a couple more than you have now. Well, hopefully that be the case, Commissioner, but I still believe that instead of going forward, we're going backwards. Thank you, Commissioner Malfi. I, I, I do appreciate, I'm sorry, I do appreciate the job you're doing and the position that you're in considering the fiscal crisis that the county faces itself. But for somebody who sits on the Public Safety Committee and uh, somebody who is very concerned about public safety in Nassau County, I am concerned about what's happening here today. And um, I went through my notes and I went through everything that I had, uh, you know, from the hearing. And um, I, to me, I was very upset that you are cutting, basically, there will be a reduced number of school crossing guards in next year's budget, if my memory serves me correctly. No, I, I, it's, it's the headcount that is present is exactly. Uh, I think it might be lower. That you're not going to film, right? Okay. And also, I went through the notes, and uh, there was not no mention at all whatsoever about reducing the number of hours for these women that do work as a school person does. And I, 
I, I, I echo even with uh, Legislative Ciotti uh, and concern over the amount of hours and the clerical work that had been done, the work that had been done that taxpayers have been paying for for these many years. Um, you know, the fact that you say that you've given, you've provided this work for them, or you've given this work for them, um, I find to be very confusing because is the work necessary or not? In all candor, a lot of the work was necessary. Some of it was not necessary. It was a mechanism to provide the guards with respect and love the uh, opportunity to work. Oh, oh my God! God. Oh, it's not oh, I, I don't know. But by reducing, by, by reducing the number of hours that these people would work, will they in turn, will they at least still keep their medical benefits? Health benefits? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, that's what we would want. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the, the savings in the budget assumes continued health insurance, and there's a number of ways that could be done. It could be solved legislatively. It could be solved um, just by uh, using vacation time. During the uh, uh, my question then is, currently, what are, what are the hours that these uh, school crossing guards work um, a day? It, it varies from crossing to crossing, but they're guaranteed. On an average, they're guaranteed what twenty hours a week. Yes. 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 Okay, ten hours guaranteed, and and. and no, no, no. Twenty hours. So, so, so then, actually, what you're saying is that uh, each person, and I guess most of them are women, as I look out at the audience right now, that these women, um, right now, are working for the county, and they're being paid for twenty hours worth of work a week. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. For school persons, correct. All right. Does that include the clerical work? Yes. Or is it just yes. Yeah. Well, here's what we're The initiative on the table here is an initiative when school is not in session, we're not going to be able to offer clerical work. Let me give you an example of a day-to-day -day activity which will continue. A school crossing is for two hours and 15 minutes. That guard gets paid for four hours, I believe. We, when the crossing is over, the guard will come into the precinct and engage in clerical work to make up to the four hours of pay. Okay. That will continue to go on, so we will be able to address some of the clerical issues using that mechanism. The, the item in the budget is simply when school is not in session, we're not going to bring guards in for clerical work during those periods. So in essence, what you're saying is that these women will go from 20 hours a week to possibly 10 hours a week. They will work 20 hours per week as they have been during school sessions. Not every school okay. has its own And then course. during the summer, you wouldn't require all of them to work. Just the ha the handful of crossings that we yeah. engage in the summer. Yeah. 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 These women will not. Money, these women will, will not be working yeah. during the summer or collecting a salary at all during the summer. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The guards that are not involved in those limited number of crossing opportunities would not. Okay, so there is. So there actually is basically um, layoffs. Yeah. Because I honestly believe that if you had your way, that none of this would be happening. I honestly believe in my heart of hearts because you've always you've always demonstrated, you know, the need for public safety, and I, I'm very uncomfortable with all of this because I do feel like we have jeopardized public safety in Nassau County. And one of the things, even when you say, because I look at and I think about this, that first of all there will be a reduction in the number of school crossing guards. But what's even more disturbing to me is that by reducing the numbers and, and forcing these women to go for jobs elsewhere in the county, yeah. we will eventually lose the seasoned workers. These people who know the children, who know the neighborhoods, who know the cars that are driving by. children are not used to anymore and this is where I see that we are compromising and I and I, I do wish that we could change this course uh, but I, I listen 
I have a lot of respect for you, and I, I do not envy the position that you're in. But I do care about these women, I do care about these workers, and I do care about the children in our communities. And I say, let's not fix anything that's not broken. Afternoon, uh, Commissioner Mull. Good afternoon. Um, a moment ago, you said that there were going to be cutbacks in uh, the office jobs in the police department. Is that correct? The offering of clerical work in school is not in session. No, no, I'm not talking about the crossing guards right now. I'm talking about the overall numbers in the uh, police department. The cutbacks are going to be made in in the office jobs, or I guess we're talking civilians. Uh, the the headcount remains the same. We're, we're going to be hiring more civilians for the civilianization efforts. Yes. 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 When we take uh, police officers from back offices and put them back on the street, we will be hiring in this budget is positions to hire to replace the police officers, to no. uh, replace supervisors. Uh, the Communications Bureau, I alluded to that. So there, there are a number of clerical and CSEA positions in the new budget. Okay. Now, uh, in terms of the, the as has been described, the 6,000 hours of work, I guess, per week. Now, you, you said yourself that some of that is, is necessary, correct? Yes. Now, um, the, so there's a value to the public safety mission of the police department for s some of that clerical work. It supports your operation. If right? it was public safety, I would continue it. And that's why well, you know, I prioritize uh, the work that has to get done, and it will get done. Right. This initiative is not compromised. Well, well, I'm not saying that you're cutting all that public, with all that work. You, you, you've said over and over again you're going to have some of that work performed over the summer, but it's, it's going to be done by others. But that work obviously has a value to your, to your department. Yes, it does. Right. Who's going to be doing that work? The He's going to hire 15 no, is that going to be sworn officers doing any percentage of that work? It's going to be dispersed throughout the department. I mean, in, in areas uh, where sworn officers um, can manage their cases to the extent that it doesn't require a clerical backup, they will. Other clerical personnel uh, are going to have to pick up some of the work. Uh, we've had discussions where we have clerical people in the patrol portion of a precinct that may have to go to the squad to help out if there's a backlog. Um, you know, uh, in a fiscal crisis, we're, we're going to have to manage our resources that this, way. This is, this is where the pieces don't come together. <clears throat> we, are, we have less police officers, we have less detectives than we had in the past. I know you're, you're hiring some more police, but they're barely replacing those that we're, we're losing. Um, we're we're, we're we, hiring police vacancies oh, well, in the street. Right. Well, anyway, we have less police officers than we historically had. We have less detectives right down the line. Um, we are no longer going to be doing having the crossing guards do these, these clerical duties, and we're going to be having people in the department fill those responsibilities, including sworn officers. Uh, economically, I don't see how that's in our interest. You may have may save a million dollars on paper, but you're going to have to have somebody doing that work. They're already employed by the department. They're already stretched to the max. Um, but I, I've got my own office. I've, I've, I've moved people. I mean, I've write correspondence myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> my, my concern is, from a public safety standpoint, that, some of the, that this work is valuable and that it's no, needed no. for support of our operations in our police department. No, no, there's and no question. And some of it's not going to get done. I don't disagree. It's valuable and important. But a decision has to be made in a fiscal crisis. And this is one I make that's in the best interest of the taxpayer and in putting forth a budget that I believe does not compromise public safety. It's a tough decision, uh, one that I've made with great contemplation and thought. Um, well, from up here, it looks like that this work will actually be done by others and that there will be a cost. And it looks like that million dollars we're, put, we're, we're, we're um, putting in the budget or taking out of the budget is on paper. And in fact, this, it's going to cost the county some percentage of money and it does not be I understand that 
you have to represent the, the, the department, but I would like to see or hear from somebody from the Swazi administration to come up here and say whether or not the county executive is in support of this specific proposal. Uh, Director of Labor Relations. <coughs> that, I think that's a yes or no question. Is the county executive supporting this specific initiative? The, the administration is supporting this initiative. And I mean, for, for background, you have to know that when we submitted this budget on, it was actually in print on September 12th. Everybody knows this isn't a surprise. The world has changed since September 12th. On September 13th, Bank of America announced that it was buying Merrill Lynch. On the 14th, on the morning of the 15th, Lehman announced that it was filing for bankruptcy protection. Two weeks later, our variable rate debt went from 175 to over 9%. On a flat basis, that's about a $70 million increase in interest expense. Three, three weeks later, three weeks later, the Dow hit 8,400. The world has changed. Things are significantly different than what they were on September 15th. So I, I ask you, where in America can you work four hours a day and get full-time health benefits for the rest of your life? To, to, to legislators, excuse me, to legislator Ciotti's point during the budget hearings, we needed to not go in with a hatchet and looking for further budget cuts. I think there was, it was openly acknowledged that we needed to do this. We went in with a scalpel, and um, we looked specifically at where we could. Let me say this. I've asked the presiding. Will you yield to the budget? Let me ask you. By the way, if I can just say, on the, on the health insurance issue, or, or the layoff issue, the intent is not to lay anybody off whatsoever, and the health insurance will now forward. And I have Dan McCray who can actually speak. Let me, let me just go like, hold on the uh, Hold on, on one second. Let me ask my question, and you can go off. If I understand correctly, when Jerry got up and spoke, he said that the uh, crossing guards are probably one of the lowest group paid. Uh, Late, lowest paid group. Uh, the lowest paid group in Nassau County government. So we lay off, or we don't allow them to work during the summer. We have 6,000 hours that have to be made up. The testimony was some percentage of that may not have to be made up. So if we work with that premise, what we're left with are people who are making $100,000 a year. Yeah. $100,000 a year that probably will end up in overtime. So we save a million by cutting out the crossing guards. Let's say we had 2,500 hours a week. Uh, and, and look at the percentages of people that are making 70000 to over 100000 and they start pulling in some form of overtime in some way, then what we're ending up probably is a net loss of a million to two million. Yeah. If you're going to start slicing and dicing, you do it at the top. Positions that, eat up, that equal the same amount that those 30 people can do it. Now, I'm not talking about cutting people in a season that have to run the government and everything else. But we have enough right now in the high end, and I'm not even talking about the police department, I'm talking about across the board, where when we start slicing at the lower end, we're losing geometrically substantially more people, which means ultimately substantially more work is not being done. And that's how I feel. Yeah. I just Take to address, over the, place. address the issue of, of health insurance just for a second, just so we're all clear. There is zero chance 
that the crossing guards will lose their health insurance benefits over the summer. And the reason why that's the case, we are now in, in binding arbitration for a successor agreement for the CSEA. With Mr. Larkin's permission, we can call the arbitrator right now and tell him that both, if, if this were to pass, that the county supports that in the new contract, notwithstanding the fact that they may not be working or using their vacation or otherwise getting paid for those three months, that the new contract will provide that they will maintain their health insurance benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, please let the speakers have dialogue and you can get up and speak as soon as they finish. We want our time! We're trying to get all the questions answered. We're going as fast as we can. We have to be on our crossings at 2 o'clock! Okay, uh, legislative votes. Alright, yes! Hold on. Uh, this question is to Mr. McPray. Uh, can you guarantee that they won't lose their health insurance benefits or it will not be diminished in any way? Yes, that's, that's what I just said. The new contract. I don't believe you. Uh, is that a what I said, what I said, Legislator Gonzalez, we have an open contract. We are in binding arbitration. The arbitrator will decide the new contract without any permission from the county executive or the legislature. That's why we're in binding arbitration. The county supports the proposal.